So here's router three. First thing, show run. Has IPv6 unicast routing been enabled? In this example, it hasn't. So notice no IPv6 unicast routing is enabled on this router. That's a problem. Show IPv6 interface brief. It looks like the IP addresses have been correctly configured on the router. So first thing, IPv6 unicast routing. We need to enable that. IPv6 router OSPF1. Again, we need a router ID. Show IP interface brief shows us that no IP addresses are enabled. Show IP interface brief, do it here. Notice no IP version 4 addresses are configured on the router. So IPv6 router OSPF1 router ID 3.3.3.3. Show IPv6 protocols. We still need to enable OSPF on the relevant interfaces. So interface gigabit 01, IPv6 protocol is OSPF, process ID is one, area is zero, interface loopback zero, put that in area zero, interface gigabit zero zero, that's gonna go into area two actually. Now when you make mistakes like that in Packet Tracer, it can break things. So I might have to restart Packet Tracer, but let's see if it works, so show IPv6 protocols. OSPF is enabled on the router. So this command is really useful. There's the OSPF process. Interfaces in area zero are those two. This interface is in area two. We can see that a neighbor relationship has been established. So show IPv6 OSPF neighbor. We've got a full relationship to a neighbor in this case, router two. Show IPv6 OSPF interfaces. We can see that OSPF is enabled on various interfaces such as gigabit 01. We can see who the designated router is, which is router two. We can see other information. Important piece here is to look for the neighbor relationships and to look at the routing table. So show IPv6 route. We can see various routes in the routing table. Can we see 2001 face one colon colon one? Yes, we can. There's the route. Can we ping 2001 face colon one colon colon one? Yes, we can. And can we trace to that network? Yes, we can. So that looks good. Router three can ping the loopback of router one. Let's do something similar on router four. So on router four, show IP interface brief. No IP version four addresses are configured. What about IPv6? IP version six is configured on gigabit zero zero and the loopback. Has IP version six unicast routing been enabled? Answer is no. So that's a problem. So IPv6 unicast routing. Notice when I do show run now, we see this command in the output. We need to have that enabled on the router. Then we're going to enable OSPF. Again, we need to specify a router ID. And then I need to enable OSPF on interfaces. And notice we're getting an error here. So I made a mistake on router three. Let's confirm the configuration on router three. This looks right. IPv6 OSPF1 area two, that looks good. But notice we are seeing an error on router four. That's once again because of the bug in Packet Tracer. This interface is in area two, which is correct. And on router three, notice the router is saying that it's got a full relationship to router four, which doesn't make sense. Notice here, 
the router is in area two. It says it has a full relationship, but we're getting errors on router four. So this looks like a packet tracer bug. Notice it says that we have a full relationship to router three, even though we're getting this area mismatch. So what I'll do is save my router configurations and restart packet tracer. That happened because of the typing mistake I made on router three. In the real world, you wouldn't have that problem. But what I'll do here is shut down packet tracer and then start it up again. So packet tracer has rebooted. I'll go back to router four. Interfaces come up, show IPv6 OSPF neighbor. We've got a two-way relationship to router three that should hopefully transition to a full neighbor relationship. But notice we're not getting the error messages. While I'm waiting for that, let's use some show commands. So show IPv6 protocols. We can see that OSPF has area two enabled on these two interfaces. Notice now that the relationship has come up. So show IPv6 OSPF neighbor, full relationship, show IPv6 route. We've got multiple routes in the routing table. So inter-area routes are shown here. Can we ping the loopback of router three? So I'll work backwards. Router three, yes we can. Router two, yes we can. Router one, yes we can. And can we trace to router one? Typo there. Yes, we can trace to router one. So I have full IP connectivity in this topology. On router one, can router one ping the loopback of router four? Yes, it can. Router three, yes, it can. Router one, yes, it can. Can it ping other interfaces such as router two's gigabit zero one interface? Yes, it can. Router three's gigabit zero one interface. Router four's ethernet interface. Router three's ethernet gigabit zero zero interface. Yes, it can. So even though we have no IP version four routes in the routing table, we can ping from one router to the other because we have IP version six routes in the IP routing table. So there's our full IP version six routing table as shown on router one. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I have full connectivity between the routers. Notice once again on router one, show IPv6 OSPF database. We can see the OSPF database here so that command shows us that router one and router two are in area one. We can see LSA type one, we can see LSA type two, so designated router. We can see inter area routes, so LSA type three routes. They were injected by router two, who's the inter area router. We can also see other LSA types in the OSPF database. On router two, we should see information for both area one and area zero. So show IPv6 OSPF database. A lot of information here. So scrolling right to the top, that command shows us output for area one. Router one and router two are in area one. If we scroll down, however, in area zero, we have router two and router three in that area. Router three is the designated router. That changed because I rebooted Packet Tracer. We can see inter area routes and other LSA types. Okay, so again, I'm happy with that. I have full connectivity between the routers in this topology. I've enabled OSPF version three for IP version six. How did you do? Were you able to complete the lab? You need to know IP version six for the CCNA exam.
Make sure that you know how to configure IPv6 addresses, static routes, OSPF, and EIGRP.